Film. All right, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, just want to introduce myself real quick. My name is Brent Porter. I'm the council chair for Popcorn this year. I uh, want to welcome everybody to come to the uh, unit master record keeping. Um, we have modified this document from last year. So those of you that are familiar with the document last year, a lot of it's the same, but there is a few things that have changed. So we do want to run everybody through it this time around. So we'll go ahead and get right into it and uh, hopefully we'll answer the questions as we go through. If you do have any questions when everything's all said and done, please feel free to reach out. My email is up on your screen right now, porterb84 at hotmail.com. Feel free to reach out to me with the question you've got and we'll get it answered um, as soon as we possibly can. Um, so we'll get, get going here and uh, hopefully we'll have this taken care of here in a short, short order. Um, first screen you're gonna come to when you open up your unit master record is gonna be the uh, Sioux Council um, popcorn, just the kind of the, the, the first informational page. You're going to want to fill out all of your information in this page, just like you have with previous years. Um, you're going to put in your district, which my district has, happens to be Red Rock. My unit is PAC 57, so I'll go ahead and put that information in there. Um, the thing that's going to change um, this year is going to be this opt-out option down here. Um, we added this over the off-season. Um, this is going to help us determine who needs to, uh, who's going to be opting out of prizes and help us helps us manage that Um from this level here. So most of you are gonna be clicking on the no option here. Um, so when you click no, it's just gonna continue on with the page um, as normal. If you do change this option to yes, it's gonna give you this highlighted section down here just as a reminder that, hey, I'm selecting yes. And because I'm selecting yes, we're not gonna be eligible for the council prizes on the prize summary tab. So what they're referring to is the prize summary tab down here across the bottom. If you go to the prize summary tab, when you have that selected as yes, you will see that the words opt out appear on your prizes. Note that you still do have the ability to pick the bonus prize and you still do have the ability to pick your uh, PR winner circle prize over here. It does show you're still eligible for that. So keep in mind that you are still eligible for that when you get to that point, if your unit decides to opt out. Also along with selecting this yes, this unit uh, uh, prize opt out tab pulls up a form for you that you're gonna need to fill out. It'll give you the information that you need um, to fill everything out. Please read through the form to know what you guys are basically agreeing to by opting out of your prizes. It'll ask for three signatures at the bottom. You can go ahead and print this off and then you can email this in to the sue.popcorn at scouting.org. If you have any questions on that email address, we put it right here in this first tab as well, sue.popcorn at scouting.org. That's going to be our main form of communication with everybody. We want anybody that's communicating for popcorn purposes um, to the council uh, to send everything to this location, not to individual DEs. Don't send it to your DE. Please send it to sue.popcorn at scouting.org. That keeps everything funneled to the same, to the same thing. If you are selecting a troop in this category, please note that when you go to the unit prize opt out, it does change the verb is here a little bit. So um, it does talk about what you need, that it needs to be a unanimous vote for your youth and things like that for some recommendations. And it asks for your troop unit uh, colonel uh, signature, your scout master signature and your committee chair as it would with previous ones as well. But like I said, a lot of you are gonna be selecting no in this option. So those of you that do select no, um, this is how, that's how we're gonna continue on for this training purpose. Um, once you've completed and filled out all this information um, on this document, you can go to the due dates tab. This tab is going to offer you uh, the information on when things are due um, throughout the selling season. If something is past due, for instance, if I haven't done my pre-order yet, because the uh, 24th of August has already surpassed, that's going to show up as a red box to tell me that I need to make sure that I go in and complete this option. As I complete it, I can check the boxes and it'll mark it as green as it gets done. If you're within one week of something being due, so for instance, as of today, we are within a week of the popcorn pickup on the 21st, as well as the opt-out forms and the kickoff weekend, which is on the 22nd. We're within a week of that, so that shows up as yellow. As that goes to surpass, that'll change to red. And then as you complete and mark your checkbox green, um, that'll go to green. Um, so. Uh, just something to help everybody keep track of where they're at with everything um, in hopes that it'll keep everything a little bit more organized for everybody to know what's due when and how, how soon I need to get it turned in. 
If you do uh, select the no option for your prize opt-out, this is the page you're going to look at, which is um, just fairly blank, just to let you know that, nope, you're guys receiving prizes, so you can go ahead and continue on to the next tab. So that's one thing that you want to um, keep in mind. If you select no, you're not going to have a bunch of information in here, so you can just continue right on past this tab. One thing we have added to this year for the unit master record is the, the next couple of tabs here. This is a seller's tab. Last year we had this as an option, but it was just a, a populate yourself field, which required a bunch of people to go on to the PR popcorn site and figure out what their uh, uh, seller IDs were. You could put it in here if you wanted to, if you didn't have to. Um, I really wanted to come up with a way that we can make this a lot easier and a way uh, smoother for all the unit uh, kernels out there. So this is what we, this is what I came up with and I hope it works for everybody. Um, I will kind of walk you through it. If you get to this point and you want to manually type in everything, you certainly can where it says no seller ID, I can type that in and it'll come up just fine. I can also type in the parent e uh, email if I want to, and that'll come up just fine. But you will have to fill out these three columns here, as well as the parent's first and last name. You want to fill out those five columns. If you fill out those five columns appropriately, then we can have something that's a little bit more automated for you to do. And I'm going to show you how to do that here in just a second. So once you have your first and last names, your dens, feel free to mark this as a uh, den. If you are a troop, this will automatically change to patrol. You can put your patrol name in here. If you want to do den numbers, you can put that. This is a free type field here. There's no requirements to this field. So it can be a number. It could be uh, characters, uh, whatever you want to do. You're going to put their parents' information in here, first and last name. Then you go over to the seller ID import tab. This is a new feature for this year. I've got instructions up here. I'm gonna walk you through how to do it real quick. It's pretty quick and easy, not too bad. Um, I believe this is gonna be a, a real good tool for everybody to utilize. And it, it's gonna eliminate a lot of mistakes, typos with alphanumeric eight digit codes and all that stuff. First thing you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to go into your PR Popcorn account. So you're gonna log into prpopcorn.com or pecatonicariverpopcorn.com if you wanna spell it all out. You're going to go into there. You're going to click on my account. You're going to log into your unit. Once you get logged in, I'm going to click on the button that says Scout Seller IDs. It's going to give me this information here. Okay. Once I get here, there's this uh, link down here that says download data. You're going to go ahead and click on the download data and it's going to pull up a document. That's uh, an Excel document. It's going to pull up for you. Looks similar to this. I've got a predetermined uh, document here that I'm actually going to use for this purpose. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my troop that I created. And so this is what I'm going to use for this one. Um, this is my superhero troop or my superhero pack for this demonstration. I'm going to highlight from this first cell inactive um, all the way down through all of my, you can put an extra few lines in there if you want to, you're going to want to do that. Um, you're going to right click and you're going to go to copy. Okay. Once you're done there, minimize that, and you come back here, right here where it says paste here, you're going to click, and you're going to right click, and you're going to paste. That is just going to pull in all that information that you just copied. I gave everybody about 55 lines here, so hopefully that's enough for everyone. But don't worry too much about this information for the email sent. The main information we're looking for is first and last name, email, seller ID, uh, things like that. So once I've got that done, then I'm good on the seller ID tab. I can leave this exactly how I have it. If I add a scout later, I can add their information down here if I want to. Or if I go back to my sellers tab, I can certainly add them in here because this is a free type field all the way across as well. When we get back to our sellers tab, we see that all that PR seller ID information has been populated for us. So that eliminates any um, fat fingering of numbers or letters or characters or anything like that. It also gives us the parent's email as well, so if we need that for future use, we can use that off of this tab. This also pulls this PR seller ID information and populates it in future tabs as we go along. I'll kind of show you how those populate. So I highly encourage you to use this feature, get all the information in there. It's a fairly simple process to do, um, just a matter of a, a couple copy and paste, and then you're off and running. Saves a lot of time on the back end of things. Anything I'm missing there, Angie, at all that you can think of? Nope, I think you've covered everything. Okay. So I've got, uh, once I got my seller IDs and everything entered, I'm to my point where I do my pre-order form. Everybody's already turned in their pre-order form. So thank you very much for that. We appreciate everybody having all that stuff in. Um, 
I do want you to go in here and actually populate this information in here. So that way it will correlate all the way through this, uh, this Excel document. I do have instructions here if you hadn't put in your order yet, but everybody's got that, so we should be able to bypass those instructions. You're gonna to wanna to put in your number of cases. Everything was ordered on your pre-order by the number of cases. So obviously chocolate lovers, cheese and trios are gonna be how many pieces you ordered. Kettle corn is gonna be cases. Remember there's eight per case. So you're gonna go in and for this unit, I'm putting in six, uh, five and all the way down the line here. Fill in all those items. Once you have everything filled out there, make sure that's accurate with your pre-order. Because once you go to the next tab, which is the unit inventory tab, it's automatically going to populate. And these numbers here are not able to be changed. So if you ever need to change any of these, you need to go back to your pre-order and do that. Once you have these entered correctly, there should be no reason why you need to go back to it. Because if you ever get additional popcorn from the council, you're going to want to put that stuff down here in this information. So don't worry about changing this up here. Notice how it does calculate everything over to the... Uh, number of containers now, it's no longer the number of cases. So if for some reason you actually went into the uh, Sioux Council website and you pulled this unit master record, I'm gonna ask that you actually go back and re-load uh, the latest version. I actually did that. Um, it would have been the uh, 14th of September is when I put it on there at about three o'clock in the afternoon. Um, so if you did that anytime in the last from my date today, the last day, then you're gonna to wanna to go out there and do that. So anything from the 15th of September on or the evening of the 14th, you're good to go. In those old style, this was actually the number of cases which uh, change all your calculations all the way through. So if you do have the number of cases up here, please go and reload the latest version of the unit master record. We'll go over how to where to go about getting that unit master record at the end of the video. So that way you guys can all go out there and load it when we're done. Once you um, have your uh, starting order populated, let's say I go back to the council on the 30th of September and I need to get another five cases of classic caramel, okay? I put in the date that I do that. I put in the number of containers. Remember, this is the number of containers. This is not the number of cases. So because I got five cases, that's 40 containers, I'm putting the number 40 in there. If I go back to them again on the 15th of October and I get another two cases of butter, I'm gonna put in the total of 16 containers. So be sure you keep track of that, okay? Make sure you put it in there accordingly so it doesn't mess up your numbers all the way through. One request I had last year was actually put more transfer lines in. So I've actually doubled the amount of transfers that you guys can do. Keep in mind that we do have the Facebook page. If you're looking for transfers, I highly recommend you use the Facebook page to go out and find somebody that has some extra. Or if you have extra, go out there and let everybody know you have extra. We'll see if we can get some of that shuffled around so that way we're not looking at getting uh, multiple truckloads of popcorn at the end of the season. So if you do a transfer, you're going to want to do a transfer in this section here. So I got the upper portion is going to be your transfers coming in. So on October 1st, if I reach out to a fellow uh, Cub Scout pack and they are willing to give me uh, five classic trios, I'm going to go ahead and meet up with them. I'm going to get the five trios. I'm going to put that in this line here. I am still going to fill out the unit to unit transfer. I need to make sure I fill out that paperwork. It needs to be signed by both parties and one of you needs to send that in, not both of you. We don't wanna double up your transfer. Make sure one of you sends that in and again, send that to the sue.popcorn at scouting.org and they will process that for you. When you get your invoice at the end of the year, it's gonna show up as a transfer to the council and then the council will transfer to the next unit. So keep that in mind. It won't show a unit to unit transfer. It'll show your unit, to the council if I'm transferring it out. If I'm transferring it in, it'll show from the council to your unit. So keep that in mind when you're doing your uh, you're doing your invoices at the end of the year. If you are doing a swap with uh, another unit, so let's say on October 13th, I'm doing a swap with another unit and I am gonna give uh, them 10 of the cheese lovers and I am going to get from them five of the chocolate lovers if that's the swap that I'm doing, I'm going to record anything that comes in on this upper portion, anything that goes out on the lower portion. So I mean, it's a two separate lines. So make sure I fill out both lines if I'm doing a swap. Again, make sure that your swap with your units, that you have both signatures and that you email that to the sue.popcorn at scouting.org. So that way everything funnels to the same thing. Okay. 
If at the end of the season, I found out that I have extra cases of a Southwest mix, a unit contacted me and said, Hey, can I get a case from you? Absolutely. Again, make sure I'm doing this as your container numbers, not full cases. Okay. Everything that's going to, everything that calculates all calculates to the bottom. This also gives me the extra on hand. A couple of years or last year, we talked about the extra on hand. Negatives were a certain thing. Positives were another thing. I thought that was a little confusing even myself. So we have a form that's going to help you later on. And I'll show you that here in a little bit. So make sure this field here is all the number of containers, not number of cases. That's the biggest thing for this page. Number of containers, not cases. All right, let's move on to the next item. So the next tab that we have is a way that we come up with in order to try and help any new kernel that's trying to manage their inventory. So this is what we come up with this year. I really hope it works for everybody. I think it will, um, as long as you uh, populate it all correctly. If you are doing a, uh, a general kit for everybody, I would come in here and I would record every scout's name the way this is set up is this is a drop down and it's going to be alphabetized by their first name. So that way it's easy for you to locate your scouts, especially some of the larger units. So I went through and I populated everybody's first order. So this 12 is going to be their initial order that I gave to everybody. We'll say for this fictitious unit that I've got. Okay. I gave all of them the same product and I put it on. If you want, and you're one that likes to record when it's been approved by a you or by a parent, you can go through and have them approve everything. If you want to record that you approved everything, you can certainly go through and you can approve it as well just by putting an X in here. Nothing really official, but it actually gives you a way to track things that, yep, the parent said it's good. They said it's good. Uh, I said it's good. We're all good. If you want to make a receipt for that, I've had some people say, hey, can we do a receipt? I 100% recommend you do that, but that's not, I don't have anything in this sheet for that. So maybe that's something I can add for future, for future reference. But I highly recommend you put down what they got, the date they got it, and then you can record that information in here. If they're picking it up from you, you're going to put in here that's a pickup. If you're, they're returning it to you, you're going to populate it as a return. Everything that's on this page, I want you to understand it needs to be recorded as a positive number. No negatives are you going to show on here. The calculations does it itself. Everything you put, I just want you to do a positive number. So notice how I got over here that they did a return but it's only a quantity of two and I'm done. Okay. I don't put a negative two. I only do positive two on everything. It's going to give you at the top what your total distributed inventory is. So based on these numbers up here, plus what you have left in your garage should actually be the total number that you've received from the council or transfers or things like that. I figured those numbers would help you calculate everything as you go. I'm going to enter in one more. Um, this is going to be a return and it's going to be uh, my scout and man who is my top seller this year. We're going to say that he returned everything on the 20th and this is going to be set up as a return. So the numbers below are actually the numbers that we're going to have in return. Again, everything is a positive number. So we can return one classic, one microwave, uh, one of the peanut butter, a couple of the pretzels, three of the Southwest, two of the cheddar, four of the microwave, three of the uh, caramel with pecans, a whole case of the classic caramel. Again, this is number of containers. So don't put cases. I want you to put number of containers in here. And then three of the popping. I'm going to say that the parent approved that. And I also approved that. So we're good to go there. And for this, I'm going to take these numbers out for this example. All right. So Anman has now returned everything. Now I'm going to say everything from, the count, from my unit has been returned to me. And I'm at the end of my season now. Okay. As your scout comes to you and says, okay, I'm ready to return everything. I'm ready to square up on all my stuff. I need to know what I've got, what I should have, what I have now, what I need to return. That's where this next tab is going to come into play here. Okay. Um, before we leave this, one thing that I did have, a, uh, somebody asked me a question on was, what about if you do a transfer from, let's say, Iron Man scout transfers something to Ant-Man, okay? You're going to want to go in here and put Iron Man's information in here. And if he is... Uh, transferring it out of his inventory into Ant-Man's inventory, you're going to put this as a return from him. And let's say it was just one chocolate lovers. And then you're going to go over here to Ant-Man and you're going to have a uh, pickup from, for one of those as well. That's how you're going to keep everything balanced. Okay. Remember how I said that the scout ID, if you enter that information correctly, it automatically populates. So I no longer have to enter all this information every time. So I can just keep moving right along as it comes. 
So that should help with keeping every keeping everything populated, but also uh, saving some time in the long run as well. So I've got this these lines here. So um, if you have any questions on how to do any of this stuff, again, please reach out to me directly and we'll walk and talk you through it. Once the end of the season comes along, your scout inventory report, I think, is going to come in really handy. Okay. If I have, uh, let's say I'm going to pull up Captain America. Okay. For Captain America, he only had one pickup that he did and he only returned two popping corn at the end of the season. This top line here is going to give me what his total distributed is. So he sold a cheese lovers, two trios, and on down the line. Okay. That is something that you can look at when your scout walks up to your garage. You can pull this up on your computer and you can say, this is what I've got for you based on these two dates that you return things to me. Um, let's go to our top seller, Ant-Man. He was our top seller this year. So I'm going to pull this up when he comes. and I'm going to say, okay, you should either be returning me six chocolate lovers or that money in equivalent. Okay. He's obviously returned all this stuff to me. You can review his order right here. You know exactly what he's got that he's ordered. And if you need to, you can pull this up with any of these scouts that you have. So whether it's Captain America, whether it's Ant-Man or Batman or whoever you want, you can pull this up from all your scouts. Again, just by clicking this drop down, you can pull that information in. This is a way that I found that helps with just keeping track of what your scouts have and what they should be returning to you or the money equivalent of what they should be returning to you. Okay. Uh, Angie, do you uh, know any other questions to cover for these tabs? Nope, I think you've got everything. All right. So we'll go to uh, the next tab, which is the unit sales record. This is uh, something that everybody should be pretty familiar with at this point. This automatically pulls over everything that everybody has sold in your unit. So it pulls over their first and last name. It pulls over what den they're in or patrol they're in. It pulls over what their ID number is. The only thing it does not pull over, because we don't have that figured out yet, we haven't inputted that into the document yet, is how many military donations they sell at the end of the season. If we have a scout that has sold some military donations, I'm gonna go ahead and put some in here. We're gonna say our top seller, Ant-Man, he sold a couple of those as well. And you're gonna enter those here. It is gonna calculate everything at the bottom. Um, it'll also calculate everything across. So you know what he's, his wagon sales, what his total amount due is here. All of these fields, if there is a miscalculation somewhere, all of these fields I can override if I want to, okay? You do not have to go by what these numbers are and go back and figure out where everything, where the mistake was. You can literally override these numbers. And I recommend that everybody double check these numbers as they go through the process. If your scout got any online sales, let's say some of these scouts got some online sales. We're gonna go down to Ant-Man again because he did really well in his online sales this year. And we're gonna put online sales in there for the total for the year. His table sales, let's say he did awesome at the table sales as well. Let's say there was a couple other scouts that did pretty well. At table sales, you can go and put their total dollars of table sales in there. When you get to table sales, you can record. Um, if you want to just give them the dollars, you can give them just the dollars here on this box. If when you record table sales, if it was just one scout and you just had them use their own sheet and they've already got all of their table sales within these numbers here, I'm not going to double up their numbers by putting uh, a table sale here. You're still going to want to keep track of your inventory. So when this number is entered over here for table sales, the products themselves are gonna to wanna to be entered here on table sale one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10, okay? It's gonna automatically uh, invert those numbers. That way you're not getting a double up on your totals when it comes to everything. Um, but if you do table sales and you wanna just give a scout, you're splitting it right down the middle between two scouts, you can just give them dollars. Take the inventory out down here. If you want to let them just take the inventory and say, yep, they took their own stuff to the table sale, they sold out of their own inventory, then all that information is going to be populated within this. Again, if you have any questions, reach out to one of us, your uh, district colonel or somebody, and we can definitely answer them for you and how you need to do that. If you're doing, uh, when the scouts start coming and bringing in deposits, so money can sometimes be an interesting thing to take care of. If you're bringing in some deposits and your scouts start bringing you money, you can start populating what they're bringing you here. Okay. Whether it's one deposit, two deposits, three, I got all up to four lines. So you can have them bring money to you. So that way you are able to keep track of it as you go. Okay. Feel free to use these. It'll also calculate what your total deposits are down here. So if you want to know what your total deposit for your first deposit among all your scouts, you can look down here. That's down here as well. And you can use it that way. 
total amount due when you get to the end of the season. This column is going to tell you, I need to go talk to Spider-Man about giving me $610 yet. I need to talk to Batman about 510 all the way down the line until everything is completely zeroed out all the way through. Use this when it comes time to closing everything out, you're ready to turn in all your money. You can use this to your advantage by keeping track of your deposits through the selling season. And then again, your last deposit can go here and you can make sure everybody has zeros all the way down to make sure you've collected all the money that you need to. And you can go ahead and forward that on to uh, the council office. All right. Once all of your numbers have been set, you now need to go and we'll talk about this when we get to our next training, which is when you're closing out everything, but you're going to go to your prize summary. Okay. Prize summary. I'm going to burn through this pretty quick because we're going to cover this a little bit more later on in the uh, selling season. Prize summary, you're going to have the green shaded are going to be eligible prizes for that particular scout. The far right gives you how much dollars they have remaining to quote unquote spend for their prizes. You'll have the amount that they've used for their prizes thus far. So what we're going to do is I'm going to do a, a scenario where Ant-Man, he's going to pick out prizes. Keep in mind, they can do multiple prizes. So if Ant-Man wants the five-piece stainless steel mess kit, he can pick that. If he also wants the uh, magnification, the telescope, he can pick that. He wants the two-person tent, he can pick that. He wants two of the Amazon gift cards. He can certainly do that if he so chooses. Now notice how all of a sudden I no longer have these green shade. That's because I don't have enough money in reserve to be able to get that anymore. If I change this to only one, now I can pick some of these other items here as well. So I'm gonna do this gift card here and I'm gonna go and I'm gonna click this gift card here. I, it's not green shaded, but I'm gonna select it just to show you guys a demonstration. It turns my whole line red. That tells you as the colonel that, hey, this scout has picked too many items. I need to get back in touch with him and tell him, hey, I, you need to cut down on something and you need to let me know what you want to cut down on. Okay. So if I go in here and I take out one of these, now I'm good to go. Oh, I still have some prizes I can pick from. So I could change this to, um, let's say he also wanted the drone. So I can pick the drone. Oh, I still have some down here that I can pick from. So I'm going to select that. Okay, now I'm all out of prize money. I'm out of 70, I'm out $70, which is a pretty good for these scouts to do. If they're within that hundred dollar mark, then they're doing really well on these. Okay. The only thing we want to make sure is that if they have $500 left in prizes to choose from, have them go in here and pick something, have them fill up all the dollars. We want to make sure that they're completely capturing these prizes and getting their full worth out of them. So make sure that we populate all this. If you are putting these in and you see you're still green on this, get a hold of that scout and say, or get a hold of parent and say, Hey, your scout still has some prizes to check from what they want of these. Oh, well, they'll go ahead and take that drone. Okay, cool. We'll get them that too. Okay. So please use that to your advantage. Again, green shaded area over here means they have a, a selection that they can make. So this scout, uh, Ant-Man is also going to pick because he qualified for the, uh, the 925 bonus. He's going to select the hammock. And the last columns over here automatically populate that he was available for the super bonus of the gift card. And he's also available for the PR winner circle, which is $3,000 for the, the uh, selling level for the PR winner circle. Okay. If they get a patch, everything that they, if they sell even a dollar's worth of popcorn, they'll get a patch that's automatically populated when it comes to finalizing everything. All of your total numbers, when you're going to enter those in, and we'll go through that at the end of the season here, are going to be down here as a total for you. So you need to get 12 patches, you need to get one of prize number six, one of prize seven, one of prize 10, so on and so forth. Over here, we talked about the PR winner circle, if they're eligible for it. That is a prize that PR Popcorn is actually offering to our scouts if they get to the $3,000 prize level. We automatically keep track of that on this page. Everything is automatically populated over here with their information. You'll need to go in here and you'll need to select which prize they get. Let's say that they wanted the $200 Amazon gift card, just put it as a quantity of one. They only get one of them. If they sell another $3,000, they can pick a second one again. If they sell another $3,000, they get to pick a third one, so on and so forth. Every $3,000, they get to pick one of these prizes. So if they do sell $6,000, then we can go in here and they can also pick the Best Buy gift card as well, if that's what they want to do. Okay. These here, we'll cover this a little bit more later, but just to touch on it quickly, these you'll have to send in more information directly to PR Popcorn through their website. And we'll talk about that when we come to the end of the sales. So I've got all my prizes and everything figured out. The last few tabs that I've got here are going to be my return form. This, the negative and the positive numbers, um, I actually calculated them over here. 
This is a return form that is actually going to be done through the PR Popcorn site this year. I'm gonna show you how to do these here in a second, but I wanted to show you this page because this tells you how many cases you should be returning as well as how many containers you should be returning. You will return exact number of containers. You don't have to return whole cases. You can return six cases of butter and four containers of butter, okay? Same thing applies to your final take order. You can order just two containers of sea salt splash. You don't have to order a full case, okay? Keep that in mind when you're putting your final order, okay? When we are putting in our final order, we are gonna go to our PR popcorn site again, and we're gonna go back to our dashboard. When you get to your dashboard, you're actually gonna go to whether it's the return or your final take order, you're gonna go to the new order. When I select new order, it's gonna bring me to this screen. I'm gonna click this drop down. There's gonna be an option here for return, which you see here. There's also gonna be an option for uh, take order. You'll have to fill out both of those. If you have no returns at all and you calculate everything just great, then you will not have a return order. If you even have one piece of popcorn to return, then you're gonna to wanna to fill this out. Again, use the transfers between your units to make sure that you try and keep this, this return to a minimum. Our goal is to have a minimum return every single year. So we wanna make sure we keep this to a minimum. So try and transfer to another unit that maybe needs it. That'll help you with your return order. That'll also help them with their, um, uh, with their purchase order at the end of the season. So you'll go here. You'll also select where your pickup location is. You'll click the submit. It'll pull up a chart for you to fill out everything you need to order. Be sure that you do the number of cases as well as the number of containers because you can do um, exact numbers on these. Same thing will apply to your take order. Again, you're gonna go into your take order tab. This will give you a layout of the number of containers that you have. The idea is that you wanna have less than a full case, if at all. So this is just strictly number of containers. Southwest mix, I need 13. So this is gonna be one full case, actually, yeah, one full case, and then five containers that I'm gonna have to order. So when I put in my order, I need to make sure that I'm figuring that out accordingly. Sea salt splash, I only need two, so I'm gonna do two containers, no cases. That is the unit master record this year. Um, I hope this helps everybody out. I did include for per request, um, I had people say, hey, I'm managing three different Excel spreadsheets here. I did include three tabs that are completely unlocked. If you're familiar with Excel and you uh, know how to pull information from other places, you can certainly use these three tabs, however you see fit. I wanted to make sure that you had the opportunity to do so if you're efficient or even if you're not, you just wanna keep everything in one spot, you can copy everything over to here. At the end of the season, this uh, unit master record, we're gonna to wanna to have this emailed into the council. So you wanna do put this back into your sue.popcorn at scouting.org email, and you're gonna send it off to the council when everything is all said and done. And you're gonna to wanna to enter in all of your uh, prize orders. Um, any questions that you can think of, Angie, that I may have missed? I'm about to go and show them where to go to find these. No, um, um, can you go to the due dates again? Sure. So the popcorn pickup for the units will be the 20th, just um, it's the 21st. Sure. So that'll be the, the 20th of September instead of the 21st of September. Okay. Because we have the those two dates. Yeah. Yep. The Sioux Falls area is going to be the, the 21st of September, but all the other locations are going to be the 20th, correct? Correct. Yes. All right. Any others that you... Anything else that I think I may have missed? Nope. All right, so we're gonna go to, if you're, when you go to do this, this unit master record can be found on the council's webpage. You're gonna go to suecouncil.org. You can click into a couple of different links, but I always go to this all things popcorn 2023. Click here for information, scroll all the way down to the bottom. And unit master record is gonna be what you're looking for. Click on that, you'll download the file. It's an Excel, it's an Excel spreadsheet name it, your unit or whatever you want, and then you can go ahead and start going from there. Again, like I said, if you have any questions, you can look here for some information. You can uh, email your unit kernels. If it's anything to do with a, a, a council thing, hey, I need to turn in something, please send all of that to the sue.popcorn at scouting.org. And then that way you can pull, uh, you, you, that way we keep everything centrally located instead of going to multiple people. So, 
Feel free to use this for any information. Feel free to use your uh, district kernels for additional information. Um, yeah, and I hope everybody has a good selling this year. Again, if you have any questions on the unit master record, if you're stuck on something and you didn't find the answer in this video, then definitely give me a holler and we'll I'll go from there. My information is up on the screen right now if you need it. All right, Angie, if there's nothing else, I think we are wrapped up here. Right. Thank you.